ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد إخوتي وأخواتي في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we'll continue the شرح of the book الرسالة باي الإمام ابن أبي زيد القيرواني رحمه الله تعالى. The Sheikh continues concerning adornment and wearing or wears. He says, ولا ولا تحضر من ذلك ما فيه نوح ناحية أو له من مار أو عود أو شبهه من الملاهي الملهية إلا الدف في النكاه وقد اختلف في الكبر الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى سيس ولا تحضر من ذلك ما فيه نوح ناحية and she should not attend concerning any of these things mentioned like this we said the, the women should not go out except for something necessary as the sheikh says ولا تخرج مرات إلا مستترة فيما لا بد لها منه من شهود موت أبويها. A woman should not go out except when she covers herself, and she should not go out except for something that is necessary, such as witnessing the death of her parents. Or a relative of ours, or something similar, mimma yuba laha, that is permissible for her. And this is in line with what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says: "Waqarna fi buyuti kunna, wala tabarrajna tabarruj al jahiliyat al ula, and stay in your houses, and do not mix." Freely with the men, the way the people of Jahiliya would do. This was an address to the wives of the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And other women are also inclusive. They are inclusive in that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in a hadith that was authenticated by a lot of scholars. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Mar'atu Awra wa idha kharajat istashrafa shaytan wa akrabu ma takulu al-mar'atu min rahmati rabbiha wa iya fi qa'ri baytiha. The woman is Awra. When she goes out, 
Shaitan turns the eyes of the people towards her. And the lady is closer to the mercy of our Lord when she is inside a house. So this is in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the wives of the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّا وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى That they should remain in their houses, remain in your houses, and do not go out and mix freely with the men the way the ladies of Jahiliya would do. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala now continues. He says, وَلَا تَحْدُرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ مَا فِي مَا فِي إِنَوْحُ نَحِيَةٍ Now when we say she can attend the barrier of appearance or a relative or something that is permissible for her that doesn't mean that she can attend anyone she should not attend minzalika of all this. Ma fi nohu nahiyati. The one that has the willing of the willers. The willing of a willer. So the word nohu is from the verb naha. Ya nohu, that is to will. And an nahiyatu is a willer. An authentic hadith which was reported by Imam Muslim and some others, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said, وَالنَّاحِيَةُ إِذَا لَمْ تَتُبْ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهَا The wailer, if she does not repent before her death, to قَامُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَعَلَيْهَا سَرْبَالٌ مِنْ قَطْرَانٍ وَذِرِعٌ مِنْ جَرَبٍ She will be raised on the day of Qiyamah. عليها سربال من قطران. She will be putting on the garment of قطران. What is قطران? قطران is this tar that they use in tarring the the roads. So the garment that she will be putting on will be of tar. All her body will be filled with fats. ودرع من جرب. And the diru, the other garments that she will be putting on, will be something of jarab. Jarab is this rabies or manj that affects some animals, that affects the skin. That is, our body will be seriously affected. It's like somebody who is uh, whose body is itching. And there will be some uh, bad things on our body. This is the way the Nahia will be raised up. It is a practice, or it was a practice of the Arabs, that when somebody died among them, some women, they are, or they were, very good in Anoh or Niyaha and practicing willing. So some of them will be rented for this and they will gather and they will start crying, wailing, tearing their garments, rubbing their faces with uh, soil and the likes. So this they will do because they had lost somebody. So Islam is against this. Just as what Islam is against, the one who loses a relative, whether a father or a mother, or a brother or a sister, when he or she loses such a person, then after some days, or after some time, they start what? Eating and uh, dancing and things like that. So some people, they feel so bad when they lose somebody, 
to the extent that they will be willing. Some people, it's like they are happy when they lose somebody and they will be dancing, drinking, taking intoxicants and the likes. These two, they have the same ruling in the Sharia of Allah. And that is why one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jarir bin Abdullah al-Bajali radiyallahu anhu said, as al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullahu ta'ala reported, kunna na'uddu l-ishtima'a ila ahli al-mayyit wa sun'at al-tu'ami ba'da dafni min al-liyaha kunna نَعُدُّ الْإِجْتِمَاعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْمَيِّتِ وَصُنْعَةَ الطَّعَامِ بَعْدَ الدَّفْنِ مِنَ النِّيَاحَ He said for people to assemble in the house of the family of the deceased, we, the companions, would consider such as a niyaha, will. Together with what? the cooking, the preparing of uh, food, just the way people do today. When they lose somebody, before the day runs out, you see them preparing uh, amala, semua, and the likes for people to watch, to eat. In fact, the family will tax themselves. They will tax themselves to prepare that. And maybe some days after, you see them putting on new clothes, and they start dancing, those who take intoxicants will take, take intoxicants. So it's like you are happy. One is joyous or, 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 with uh, the death of that person. So there is no difference between the one who is doing this and the one who is also willing. So everything should be moderate. You should not wait because you lose somebody. Yes, you cry. As the Prophet Sallallahu cried when he lost his son, Ibrahim, said in the line, la tajma, wa inna al-qalba la yahzan, wa inna lifiratika ya Ibrahim la mahzunun. The heart is shedding tears. And the mind, the heart, is also grieved. And we are sad. We are not happy for having lost you, O Ibrahim. But you won't say anything except what Allah will be pleased with. So one will cry, one will feel bad. We know the rulings that are attached to somebody who loses a husband, what Islam wants her to do, and things like that. But to go to the extent of Willing, this Islam is against completely, and that is why the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, min The willing one, if she does not repent before her death. The one who has willed before. Huh? If she doesn't repent. Or the one who is still willing. If she doesn't stop that and repent. On the day of Qiyamah, she will be clothed with time. And she will be like somebody who has been affected by rabies. Her body will be itching. And so she will be Scratching our body seriously, she will be affected by that. May Allah save us from this. So, Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, What and Nahiha? What if a man does that? They have the same ruling. Because Al Hukm Yaduru, Ma'ilati Yujudan Wa Adama. The ruling goes with what? With the presence of his cause. So, if the cause of a ruling is inexistent, so the ruling will be what? In existence as well. So if a man does that, they have the same ruling. Because at Nisa Ushakai Kurujal, the women are like the men in rulings. Except if you see 
a text that says, no, this ruling is not applicable to, to a man. Now, somebody who knows that uh, a relative of her, a woman that knows that a relative of her dies, and we say she can go out when she loses somebody who is dear to her, but if she knows that that place is a place where there is going to be near her, then she should not go. She should not go. And this is something that we have to take seriously. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِيتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُفَارُ بِهَا وَاسْتَعْذَوْا بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُ مَعْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُولُوا فِي عَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِثْلُهُمْ Allah has revealed to you in the book that when you see people making jest of the verses of Allah, they don't take the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seriously. And they are doing kufr with the rules, rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not sit with them. Until they enter into a different discussion. Now, Allah did not say you should not relate with them at all because they are human beings, they are human beings. There are areas that what you have to relate. But when they are doing things that are kufu or things that are ma'asi, things that, that indicate, I see what they are making just of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says you should not take in Tosikat. And some people, they are happy. They are frustrating with what? With the consumption of in Tosikat. And you say because they are your relative, if you don't go there, they watch. They will not be happy with you. Now Allah says what? Allah take corona my home. Don't sit with them. And that is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu also said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, that, Man kana yumi billah wa yumi al-akhir, fala ya qarudu ala ma'idati yudaru ala al-khamru. Whoever believes in Allah and Allah, they should not sit in a gathering where people are watching consuming intoxicants. Children sit there. So this is what explaining that verse. This is explaining that verse. So such a lady shouldn't say because they are my relatives, they are so and so I have to go. No, she should not go. So the same thing is applicable to the man. It's not something that uh, is peculiar to the woman. So if a man finds himself in the same situation or in similar situation, she should not, he should not attain the garden as well. Nam the Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, Wala tahduru min thalika ma fi ibnaw kunahiyati awlahun min mizmar awlahun min mizmar or lahu, what is lahu? Lahu is what is play. Min mizmar that contains an eight mizmar. What is mizmar? Fruit. A rudin or something of piano or jita. Or something similar from among the instruments that make one forget the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسُ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاشْتَرِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ ها؟ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْكِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغَدَاءَ ها؟ فِي الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرْ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فَالْأَنْتُ مُتَّهُونَ The shahid here is that after Allah has talked about intoxicant and maysir maysir is anything that makes you negligent or unmindful of the zikr of Allah. Anything, whether you put a bet on it or not, anything that makes one unmindful, anything that you engage in and you become what? 
unmindful of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a thing is what is amazing. As Shaykh Rizal ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah ta'ala has been in details in his work, Majmul Fatawa. That is in Majmul Fatawa. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama yuridu shaytan ayyuki abinakum al-adawat al-baghada fil khamri. Shaytan wants to cause enmity between you and hatred huh? amongst you. Fil khamri in, in, in Tazikant. Huh? Wal maysir and maysir. Wa yasuddakum. Wa yasuddakum. And dhikrillah. And wants to take you away from dhikrillah. Wa anisala. And salah. Fa al-antum ta'um. Go away from it. So anything that will make you go away from the commandments of Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do, such a thing is called what? It's massive. And it's something of uh, is mulhi, is malahi. Huh? Things that mix one. And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهَ وَالْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ إِشْ أَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَتَّخِذَ عُزْوًا so, Abdullah bin Masood that Allah will vouch that this is referring to what? Music. Music. Because when you start listening to music now, huh, you forget things. Some people when they want to forget their soul, Huh? They put on watch music. Or they take intoxicant. When they take intoxicant, they forget to watch the soul. When they start listening to music, they forget the soul. Though after it has come to an end, the soul comes back. So it's not only that watch they forget the soul, that thing also prevents them from what? Zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why somebody when he hears a recitation of the Quran and he hears music, Shaitan wants somebody huh, to go to watch the music. And that's why that verse, if you look at the end, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? وَإِذَا تُتْلَى لَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا وَاللَّهِ مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعَ كَأَنَّ فِي آذَيْهِ you doesn't want to you see the beauty of the Quran you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as what describe this to us so Musical instruments is haram. Any musical instrument is haram. Unless the one that the Sharia says, okay, you can enjoy this. Al Aslu fil Malahi al Hurma. Anything musical is what is haram. And that is why the Prophet said, that لا يكونن في أمتي أقوام يستهلون الحرة والحريرة والخمرة والمعازفة. Some people are coming among this ummah. يستهلون يستهلون. That is, they will practice. They will do الحرة. What is الحر? Zina. They will be doing it. It will become common place. Amongst them, the istihlal is not istihlal qalbi. Is what is istihlal amal. That is when you look at their practices, you say, "Oh, it's like these people have what legalized this thing." Is that what they have legalized it? That is in their mind that it is legal, but it's because of what the rampancy of that thing that the istihlun al hira wal harir. The wearing of what? Harir. Wal Khamra. And what? And it does it. Wal Ma'azif. And what? Ma'azif. Look at the combination. 
somebody who puts on harir huh? and he goes to a party when he gets to that party what does he do huh? it takes intoxicant when it takes his intoxicant the music is going on what will end that thing? zina يستحلون الحرى والحريرة والخمر وال والمعزف. So the basis is that musical instruments are haram. So those scholars who are saying you can listen to music, you can watch, they are what? They are going against the ishma of the son of Saul. This is what against the ishma of Saul of Saul. Then we would, if we say, okay, there are among people from among the later scholars, later, not the Salaf Salih. Because some people may call people like Al-Ghazali, Ibn Hazmi. Ibn Hazmi was a later scholar. He existed around 450 something to 5 something. Hijra. So he's not one of the Salaf. Al-Ghazali came after him. Not one of the Salaf. When you are talking about the Salaf, you are talking about people up to the time of people like uh, maybe Al Imam Bukhari at most. People up to that time. So if you want to expand it a bit, you may say people who lived till around 210 or something like that. This is what the Salaf. For people who came around three something, four something, they are not among the the Salaf Soli that we are talking about. Now they may be Salaf to us. Somebody who dies, what? Huh? 50 years ago is your Salaf. But we are talking about the Salaf, the real Salaf in Islam. Yeah, these are the people. That those are persons that said, what? Khairun Nas, Karn, Thumma Ladina, Yalunam, Thumma Ladina, Yalunam. So when you want to count, count this, maybe you'll be counting around two something. Or maybe less than that. So the Salaf, they did not support. And that's why Imam Malik Ta'ala, when they talked about this Gina of a thing, this music uh, that people will be drumming, they said those that practice this amongst us in Medina, they are the Fusak, the sinful people. Today, a scholar will not write book uh, permitting what? Music. When uh, Castivi, uh, Castivi, you know Castivi, you know Yusuf Islam now. Uh, so when he embraced Islam, he, he dumped music. Then somebody gave him a fatwa. Al Qurdawi gave him a fatwa that well, there is nothing wrong, and the man went back and said, What is doing uh, Islamic? What is Islamic music? So a woman should not attend such, whether I watch musical, except if it is what in line with what is done as permitted. So we should understand this now. Wala a woman shouldn't go out illa mustajirata, except what she covers herself very well. And if she's going out, she's going out for something that is necessary. Such as witnessing the death of appearance. Or somebody who is a relative of ours. Or something similar to that. Of things that are permissible. For, if any of these contain no hunahiatin, the wailing of the wailer, any play of uh, mismar, flute, or root, or chita, or shibi, himnel malai, or something that can uh, make people turn away from the uh, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She should not attend any of this. Illa dufa fil nikah. Illa dufa fil nikah. Except duf. Except duf. What is duf? They will translate as tambourine. 
this is something that looks like what the people call uh, this uh, sakara uh, or something like baduri. Uh, it has only one face. That is, one side is covered. The other side is what? This purple. If both sides are covered, it becomes what? Purple. Huh? Drawn. This is haram. What is the evidence? The evidence are those things that have uh, quoted and more. Why are we not saying that Dufu is permissible? It's because Islam let us know it is permissible. And that was why when Abu Bakr entered in the house, entered the house of uh, the Prophet وسلم, and he saw two young girls beating what? Beating Duf. What did he say? He said what? Mazmur shaitan the Bayt of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mazmur shaitan. Huh? He called it what? Mazmur shaitan. Did the Messenger say what? It's not Mazmur shaitan. He didn't say that. He said, Da'a woman, leave both of them. Fa'inna liyawm. Eid. Today is Eid. Today is Eid. لِيَعْلَمَ الْيَهُودَ أَنَّ فِي دِينِنَا فُسْحَا So that the Jews will know that there is what? Fusha. There is a kind of what? Allowance in our deen. It's not that what? It is completely haram. How this is planned? The same thing happened to Umar of Allah. When those young girls, they saw Umar coming, what did they do? They quickly eat the the tofu. And Messenger of Allah said, Umar, if Shaitan sees you, she takes this, it takes this way. If you take here, Shaitan takes this way. So they run away from you. So this tells us that what he approves what Umar the law and was what did. And he didn't say what he did. Because it is clear. Once you allow something of drumming and things like that, forget it. Salah, people will not observe. The call of Allah, people won't do anymore. And that's why some people today they use what? They use the drum as a as zikr. They tell you that this bandit is saying what? La ilaha illallah. They can dance from what? From morning to night. From night to morning. All you know of what you do in the Quran. And that's why Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah ta'ala said, if somebody says he's using something like this to watch, to move closer to, we say what? You are a liar. This method can never be approved. So those who say who are saying that what our children have been taken to churches and things like that with this drum, so let us introduce drum. You say no, you can't introduce drum. Teach them the religion of Allah. Not that you introduce drum because you want to win the heart of the people, no. Al Imam Shafi Rahmaullah Ta'ala said, Khalaf to be the Iraq, Shay'an, you call Law Tahbir, Ahdatha was Zanadika. يَسْرِفُونَ بِهِمْ النَّاسَ عَنِ الْقُرْآنِ He said, when I left Iraq, huh, there was something that some people were doing, which was called what? A tekhbir. This is like doing this uh, consider of a thing that they will be doing it in such a way that when somebody listens to the Quran, you want to prefer what the, this consider because of the voice, the way they switching their voices in a melodious uh, tone. So he said, what? Ahdathahu az zanadiqa. Who is a zindik? A zindik is somebody who has gone out of the Islam. The monafiku. He said, what? Yasrifuhu, yasrifuna mi innas anil Qur'an. So when you look at this Athar that we have brought, and you look at the verses of the Quran, you see what? The Salaf Usali, they understand the Quran very well. They understand the Quran very well. So, 
All these musical instruments, they are haram. So what is permissible there is what the Sharia permits during each time. Who will be doing that? Is it me, you, everybody? The practice, the practice of the Salaf Soli, you won't see the men beating doof. Huh? You can never see that. The men are beating doof. No. The grown up women, no, it's not in there. The practice is what the young girls, the young girls. And what they will be beating is what is doof, because it's not that loud. It's not that loud. So, and that is why the Sunnah Amaliyah of the Salaf is that what? The men, they don't beat drum. So, when you see men beating drum, they are what? Huh? They are copying the women. They are copying the women. So, if a man says, I'm a musician, you see what? No. Women, the women, huh? Islam does not allow a woman to be what? A musician. Because when you say somebody is a musician, that means he's doing the. He's doing it often and often. So that is the meaning of what? Of a musician. And that's why Aisha Jalania, when she was talking about those two young girls, she said what? They were not musicians. They were not singers. They were not singers. So for somebody to make it a practice, it's not allowed for the women. Over the young girls, they shouldn't make it a practice. That's what they will be doing it often. It becomes what like a kind of a, a hobby or a kind of a profession. No. So men that are musicians, or singers, so they are imitating the women. Al mutashabbiuna bin nisa'in narujan. They are women that men that are copying the the women. So the Sheikh says what is doof, is doof that is allowed. Fin nikah, fin nikah. What is the evidence? We have the hadith of Messenger of Allah said first do ma bayl al-halal wal haram fin nikah al-doof wa sawj. The distinction between halal and haram in nikah is what? A doof, a salt. The dofu and what? The song. And also, when somebody was uh, doing the vow from among the Ansar, and Aisha joined them in taking the lady to the house of the husband. Rasulullah said, Watch, Alaysa ma'akum lahun. Don't you have something of lahun? So, and they followed the person with what? With the, the lahun. And they are saying, What? Atainakum, atainakum, something like that. And they were beating doof. So, this is promising. Likewise, on the day of what? Right, as you have mentioned before. Some scholars said when somebody returned from a travel or a war as a lady went to the Messenger of Allah, a young girl went to the Messenger of Allah, Allah Salam, and she said that, O Messenger of Allah, I vowed that if Allah return you Saliman, that he is uh, safe, that I'm going to beat doof before you. And Mr. Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, In kunti nadharti, fa fa'ali wa illa fala. If you have vowed that you do it, do it. So some scholars understood from that hadith that it is permissible when somebody returns from what? From war. 
just as the Prophet returned from war. Some said it's because of the vow that he has, the vow that made Messenger of Islam allow her. Unnaily, Messenger of Allah wouldn't have allowed her. But the other scholars said if it is something, were it to be haram, Messenger of Allah wouldn't have allowed something that is haram. So, and that's why some scholars, or most scholars, they, they limit it to something like this. Some said we can generalize it to anything of what? Happiness and joy. Anything of happiness and, and joy. But the, the, what most scholars are upon is that it's only allowed in this situation because we have text for those situations. And we have said earlier on that Al Aslu, Fil Malari Ish, Al Hurma. It's haram. That's the basis. So the one that is allowed, we should not blow it out of its uh, proportion. Wakadu Khtulifa fil Kaba. He said there is difference of opinion concerning Kaba. What is Kaba? Kaba is when it has what? When it is closed in both sides. On both sides. So this is Kaba. He said there is Khilaf. But as I've said, what most scholars are upon is that you can make use of Kaba in place of uh, Duf. So you make use of Duf. And the Duf, when we say Duf, it translates as tambourine. It should not have those uh, rings. You know, some of the dufu, the, the tambourines, they have what, rings, these uh, rings around them. No, you shouldn't have that. Just like the, what they call sakara, or small bandir, uh, so it, I mean, but it's not that you use it for ibadah, as some of the uh, zanadika are doing that they use it for ibadah. You can move closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the beating of a bandir. This is something of joy. But it should not be uh, blown out of its uh, proportion. So, inshallah, we will stop here. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, wa jama'in. Subhanaka lahumu bi hamdik. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta asalatu. Inna alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa alihi wa ashabihi wa barakatuh. Amma ba'du. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta Um, is it permissible for a sister to work in an office, like for example in ministries and all of that, then also sister's night, is it permissible? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. It has been said several times that it is permissible for a woman to walk. The Salaf Sali, they did not prevent the women from, from walking. And the Sheikh did not say what they can go out. He said they can go out, but they must cover themselves. And he mentioned places that they can go and things similar. So, but where there is free mixing between men and women, this is not permissible. So if a lady is working in the ministry and there will be free mixing between her and the, and the men, so we know this is what? Gate of evil. We've had many cases of some women who, who work in the local governments and the likes. What happened? Allah wa'ala. So if there is no free mixing, then a woman can walk. And if the job itself is something that is halal, then she can do it. Allah wa'ala. Sister's night. Sister, sister, uh, sister's night, this is when the women, they gather in the house of a lady that is going to be uh, taken to her husband's house the following day. So they gather in a house that night, that is the eve of uh, taking her to the uh, husband's house. This has no basis. It has no basis. That gathering is baseless. It is bid'ah. What we have evidence for is when they are taking her, they follow her there. Not that they gather in a house or gather somewhere else 
and what they will be dancing and things like that. This will not have evidence for it. We do not have evidence for this. So it is the Ikhwan Muslimun that are practicing things like this. Huh? The Al Ikhwan Muslimun, there are people practicing things like this. And from what I've heard, the way some of them are even dressed that night is something that is uncalled for. That a sister cannot and must not dress before a fellow sister in that way. Some of the things they, they put on, they feel free so that what they can dance the way they want to dance. So this is what in Wahi I think it's not part of the Wahi review to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is not permissible. So it's not permissible for those reasons. One, we don't have evidence for even organizing that city huh, on that eve of the Zivav. So that is one. Two, what transpires in that gathering? Allah Alam. And at times there are some things that go there, they, maybe they try to teach us some of the things that, you know, when we hear some of these things, it may not be something that can be helpful to us in a, in a, in, in a matrimonial home. Huh? Like teaching somebody how you can just be submissive to the uh, rulings of the Jama'ah and things like that. No, it's, it's true. Things that Messenger of Islam did not ask the companions to, to give to him. So they tell you, you can't do anything except with what? The permission of, of somebody who is not a head of, of state, who is not a governor, not a local government chairman. But you will be the one to control your affair. He will tell you when to, when to cough and when not to cough, when to laugh, when not to laugh. Anything you are doing, you and your husband, you have to report to somebody. What type of thing is this? So this is what? Enslavement, which the Prophet Islam did not even do to his companions. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us for Now, how do we deal with someone who is a Muslim, but he says that he goes to church jokingly, and then and he does not really, he does it. And when they try to um, call him to order with regards to what he's doing, they will say, okay, I'm sorry, I must have told her. And sometimes uh, later he goes back and he does it again, saying, joking that he goes to church. And then... Um, does he go? Yes. So he That's not joking. Uh, and in, well, <laughs> what I mean is, you know, some people can be very funny. And sometimes maybe he's saying it. But he really meant it. So this, uh, they said this person is not mad, but but it's too playful, too playful, and he seems to have some psychological issues. Why it is clear? Is that the person is uh, doing his tiza with the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? And the one who does is istiza with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a kafir. He's a kafir. So when he goes uh, to that place, to the church, and he comes to the mosque, what is, what is that? Huh? Nifak. Because what he's telling you when he gets there, we tell them similar thing. He's doing what? He's doing that. So when he gets to his people, he will say, so what he's saying is what he will say there. So this is Tazardu. So it's Nifak. So if he wants to be a Muslim, be a Muslim. be a Muslim. be a Muslim. be a Muslim. So you see that he embraces Islam completely or he leaves Islam. So you can't say I'm going to practice Islam this way or the way I, I, I want. As some people will say, I'm a liberal Muslim. There's nothing like what? Liberal Islam. Is that you are a Muslim or you are not a Muslim? 
If you call yourself liberal Muslim, Islam says what? That is nifak. And that's why in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala classified the Muslims into, classified the people into how many? Three people. The kuffar and the munafikun and the Muslims. So for you to want to be a munafik and you say what? I'm a liberal Muslim. No, you are a munafik, not you. There is something like liberal Islam. So may Allah save us and rectify the person and every one of us. Allah. Okay, there are two questions actually. Two interesting questions. One of them is I think both of them should be. I want to start to help us um, treat it. Shall we? Well, one is three in one, and the other one is um, one separate question. Um, the, the first one says that if someone has tried to ensure success in his marriage, but the spouse is too difficult to manage, that um, the relationship has turned violent and sometimes bloody, but for the fear of Allah and the consequence of upon the children, one is still keeping was one is still keeping the marriage, but one is afraid of the danger of the aggressiveness and violence. What should one do? Now, the other one is, um, what advice will you give to a sister that wants to be a second wife to someone? Then, is it proper for, an age, for the age gap between the husband and wife to be as much as 13 years? <laughs> Well, uh, Alhamdulillah, Salat, Rasulullah. With respect to the first question, that there is uh, aggressiveness on the part of the man or the part of the the woman. So the question I did not mention. Now, if not for the constant uh, maybe beating and uh, things like that, so one would advise that the woman bears, bears it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also advises us. وَإِنِي مُرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ عِرَاضًا فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يُسْلِيَا بَيْنَ أُمَا سُلْحًا وَالسُلْءُ خَيْرُ وَحُدِرَةِ الْأَنْفُسُ الشَّرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if a woman uh, is noticing a kind of iraj, abandonment on the part of uh, husband or noticing a kind of no shoes that the husband is not treating her well, Allah says there is no harm if both of them reconcile. Reconciliation is better for both of them. So at times it may be the man that is observing so much, some things in, in, in his wife. If he can also be a, and manage, as long as that thing that he sees is not something that affects the thing, it's something that affects our, his own rights. If he can be a, that's good. The same thing is applicable to the, to the woman. But Islam is a religion of reality. If the woman knows that she cannot bear her rights, are being what trampled upon. She's been denied a right. She has a right to opt out of that marriage by seeking what color. And if it is a, the man that is also be denying his own right, he has a right to also what to do to lack. And that is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says: "What wa iya tafarraqa yughni Allah kullan min saati." It's not a do or die matter. If both of them, they go apart. Allah is going to enrich each one of them from his watch, his bounty. But for them to manage, this is what is good for them. This is what is better. Now, as the question I mentioned, there are children, there are a lot of things that one has to take into consideration before you say, okay, I'm divorcing you. Or before you say, what? I'm seeking honor. Because if you don't think about this very well, you may end up blaming yourself. And for the man that is saying what I'm divorcing, once the divorce is worse, is three. Eh? Don't allow any family member or relative to watch, to pressurize you 
Because when you tell them, this is what Allah said, they'll be telling you in Allah Ghafur Rahim. And Allah is saying what? فَإِن تَلَّقُهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى يَنْكِهَا حَتَّى تَنْكِهَا زَوْجًا غَيْرًا And they are saying what? إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ رَحِيمٌ So in that way, you have to think twice before you divorce your wife. You have to think very well before you say what? I want you to, to release me. Because if the man releases you, he may not want you again. So we have to... So and that's why as long as uh, what is going on between both of them has not gotten to the level of uh, maybe affecting the deen itself. If it affects the deen, the advice is that what go out of that marriage. Don't let any worldly thing prevent you from going out of it. Then if it involves beating, huh, maybe their eyes are swelling huh, because of what? The blow and things like that. Maybe the woman is somebody that will break both you. When there is fight, it's knife. <laughs> Don't say I'm considering the children. No. Maybe it will be in the grave. <laughs> that you realize that you have uh, committed something that is uh, wrong. Now, with respect to the second question, uh, the, the age difference. Huh? The age difference between a man and uh, a woman who want to get married to each other. There is no any text that says this should be the age limit. Fine, most people they want to marry somebody who is their, who is their age mate, huh? or somebody who is uh, if the lady is younger than themselves, they prefer that. As some of our brothers are doing today, want to take a second wife for instance. We're looking for what a girl of uh, 18. 1920. Ah, there are sisters who are 30 years old. Ah, well, I don't want. I don't want that. Who is going to marry them? Are they going to marry non-Muslims? The men, we are few. Then we have a lot of sisters that are not married, and we are still running away from them. We are all looking for what? 18. And who some people are looking for 12? <laughs> So we have to consider them as well. We have to what, take into account. And at, at the same time, the women should also be considered. Some women, their taste is very high. Somebody who knows that the age is not on her side, and she wants to be what? The first wife. I don't want to be masna, as you will see. And you know that if the man takes you to the family and they see you, what's, what's her age? And he says, what, 30 or 32? And they say, ah, glory <laughs> buni wa ora, ora wa keke. So we should also be considerate. Don't be too demanding. Do it for the sake of Allah. Look for somebody that is pious. Somebody that will assist your religion. So some of these things that to put place on our parents, my, my mother will not want me to be a second wife. My mother will not want me, to, it's you that don't want it. If you really want it, you can convince your parents. But because you yourself do not want it, but you are looking for somebody to watch, to use as excuse, to say your parents do not want this thing. So we have to sit down and look at these things. We are affecting ourselves. Wallahi, I personally am pinch when I see sisters 28, 30, 30 something, not married. I feel for them. Our brothers are running away. Then the sisters themselves are also not helping the matter. And the parents are pressurized. Somebody who is putting on hijab and she's maybe 30 years old, she's not, she has not gotten what? The husband. The parents will say, is it because, it's because of the hijab that she's using that she's not being proposed to? So they want to pressurize her to want to take off the hijab. But those parents have forgotten that there are women who do not even put something on their head. There are women who are exposing their ties outside there and they are looking for what? Husband. In fact, there are rich women that are not married. They have all the riches, 
but somebody has not proposed to them. So, so many cases. So, we have to educate and enlighten people concerning things like this. And what? Educate ourselves. You do some things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us. Wa sallallahu wa ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa jma'in. Subhanaka Allahumma wa alhamdulillah. Ashara ta'ilaifah. Ashara ta'ilaifah. Ashara ta'ilaifah.